Yeah, hello everybody. I think it's time to start telling my story. Um, I have to put it into the context of um, history because to be quite honest, everybody's story is a history of who they are or really who they were going all the way to who they are now and um, it just makes sense to do that so let's just start I was born May 20th 1964 at that time the U.S. was very much involved in Vietnam and um, a few years earlier if everybody remembers their history correctly President Kennedy was assassinated but also at the time I was born the civil rights movement was very much, you know, in the forefront along with Vietnam, the protesting of Vietnam. Um, which I really don't remember much of anything during that period of time because I was baby at that time but you know but I was born in a hospital in Riverside California at that time my father was stationed at March Air Force Base we lived off base you know, my mother, my dad, my two sisters, and my brother. But even though I was born out in California, I don't remember a thing about it. After that, my family moved to Texas. We lived there for like six months. Again, I don't remember that. Then we got, my dad got stationed at. Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, which I do have memories of. Now, even though they tend to be kind of um, you can say in a way faded memories, there's certain parts of it that I remember. Um, The parts that I do remember is um, always wanting to have a bedroom like my sisters had, you know, a definite girl's bed bedroom, and that has a lot to do with who I am both back then and now. Um, and the strange thing about it is that the bedroom that my brother and I shared never really felt like it was my room. Because most of the stuff that was in that bedroom was my brother's. Um, I have to stop doing um, but continuing on, during that time that we lived at Whiteman, I remember um, watching, always watching my mom get ready for work, you know, 
her putting her makeup on. You know, and kind of hoping that I would be able to do that one of these days. You know, and at the time I really didn't comprehend the difference between male and female. That really didn't start to sink in until later on. You know, I still, when I was that age, I still wondered why I had to share a room with my brother, why I couldn't share a room with my sisters. Um, but, also at that time, too, I... was also kind of like you can say if I was born female I would have been kind of like a tomboy and that's just because at the time I would wear cowboy boots that my mom would fight with me to take them off at night um, I also a lot of times went around, walked, you know, went around the base with my cap guns on my hips, which was kind of funny seeing a little kid walking around on an air base with cap guns, but. In a way, you can kind of say that when we lived there, even though I don't didn't know at the time what was going on with my parents, you know, I only looked at it as good, you know, a good time. Um, then after a while. I would say a few years when we were, after we, well, a few years of living on the base and it's there, my parents got separated and divorced. And in a lot of respects, I kind of blamed it on myself. And for a kid between the age of like, Four, well, you can kind of say like four, five, six. Um, you tend to think that when your parents got get separated and divorced, that you were the ones at fault, but you never really understood why they had to do it. You know, and that's something that I didn't learn until years later. But continuing on, after my parents got separated and divorced, we moved off base into the town of Noster. Now, my dad kept on requesting, you know, to go overseas, you know, he was a supply sergeant at the time, you know, with the Air Force, so, but, um, I always, At that time, I didn't know what he really did. You know, I thought that he was doing, I don't know what he was doing, but um, 
during that period of time, my parents were separated and divorced. I hardly saw my dad. And when I did, I was always happy to see him. But then again, so was my sister, well, both my sisters and my brother. But, um, as time went on, my mom met a younger, you know, a young airman. He was around the same age as my, as my dad, so he wasn't that young. But, um, they got married, and we got stationed at Plattsburgh. And during that whole time, I was still hoping and wishing that my mom and dad would somehow get back together again. And that never was meant to be. But still, when we moved up to Plattsburgh, my brother and I still shared a bedroom. My both my sisters shared a bedroom, and I still felt like it wasn't my bedroom. You now my brother, at that time, and he still is. Um, tends to want to control what everybody in the family does. And I don't think he really has gotten in his head that he can't do that. But that's his own problem. Though I remember the first Halloween when we were up here at the air base, I wanted to go trick or treating as a girl. And my sister Kim, who's only a couple years older than I am, was willing to, to do that, you know, willing to help me go trick or treating as a girl. A month beforehand, her and I went to her closet, picked out something for me to wear. As a matter of fact, I got pretty much into it because I also, also wanted to wear her tights and a bra. As a matter of fact, I almost was tempted to ask her if I could wear her underwear but I didn't. But that Halloween was amazing. But um, leading up to that time, I had that had those clothes in my closet. Well, my side of the closet, and I would look at them and just be thrilled about the whole idea of going trick-or-treating like that. My brother, <laughs> he was not over-enthused about it. He really didn't like the idea of me doing that. But at the time, I was, you know, I was like eight years old. I didn't care, you know. It was Halloween. So, that day, I got dressed up in my sister's clothes. She did my makeup, which was really nice. And we went out trick-or-treating and I really had fun that night. You know, 
it was probably one of the best nights that I had as a child. I really enjoyed that. But, um, moving on with the story, I remember, um, there was one day when um, my sister Kim and I were in the dairy store on base, which was basically a small, the, the Air Force's own version of a convenience store. And her and I were in there getting some candy, and these two ladies walked by us and one of them made the comment to her friend that oh aren't they a couple of cute twin girls and that just that to me was kind of a surprise because It was like, well, and around that time, yeah, I knew that I was born male, unfortunately. But um, also, my mom was pretty liberal with all of us kids, as she has always been. And she. She didn't mind me having long hair. When you're talking, this is in the early seven, early to mid seventies. It didn't bother her that I had long hair. As a matter of fact, my hair was almost as long as my sister's hair, <laughs> which is kind of funny when you think about it. But um, yeah, it just. caught me off guard when that lady said that to her friend and but also it made me feel good inside too and the thing too is that at that time nobody knew what transgender people were or what a transgender person would look like or anything like that. I know I sure the hell didn't. But it was I say it was nice at that time. You know, I, and it kind of made me really want to be who I truly am. And um, I just didn't know what I wanted, how to go about it, and for a kid that age, during that time, there was no real way of being able to actually relate to anybody when it came down to being transgender which 
when you think about it, it's pretty sad compared to what kids nowadays and all the information that's out there about trans, you know, gender and gender dys dysphoria and all that. You know, especially seeing that those that had transitioned lived, you can lived in, in stealth mode. They did not they did not let the past be known. And it wasn't until God about almost twenty years ago that transgender people started to tell their story and come out. But you know so at that point in time in my life back in the early to mid seventies I didn't know what it meant to be transgender. All I know is that I had these feelings that I had to suppress. And keep to myself. Which does do a number on a person. So, I'm going to end this part for now. There's going to be more of my story. And as I remember other things, I will elaborate more. So, until next time, be kind to yourself and have a nice day.